For this DIY video, I wanted to show you everything that we're going to be using to make this chandelier happen. So for starters, obviously you're going to need your wood beads and uh, let's just go over the sizing basically. They are natural wood beads, by the way. They're not painted, they're not stained. They are not like colored at all. So I like the look of that, but you could buy whatever color that you'd prefer. I got these beads from Amazon. I will link everything down below if you're interested. And so for starters, we have the 10 millimeter wood beads. And what I did was in each bowl, I wrote down the size of each beads that I was using. That way I didn't get confused. So right here we have the 10 millimeter, then we have the 14 millimeter, 16 millimeter beads, 20 millimeter beads, and then the 25 millimeter wood beads. So something that's crucial in my opinion with this entire project is or are needles. So I just use the biggest one in the kit that I have right here. I had this already. Um, the needle is really going to help you string up the beads with the twine. I tried doing it without the needles at first and it was taking me so long. I was getting really frustrated once I pulled out these babies like it was easy peasy lemon squeezy here we have cooking twine like i said you can buy this at walmart literally any store in the cooking section um i believe in like the spanish aisle but i'm not i'm not certain just ask cooking twine you could use fishing line if you prefer that just make sure that the fishing line you buy is uh going to hold a good amount of weight you could use a ruler i just have a yardstick here um you could use a measuring tape whatever you need but you do need to measure out your strings so that is important these are some of the things that you're going to need for this diy video i say some because there are a few more things that i need to mention but let's just get started with stringing the beads i'll mention everything else we need as we go So here we have the first level of the chandelier completed, which I've made my own mistakes, I've learned from my mistakes, and now the second time around for the second little ring, I'm able to show you exactly what to do. So pretty much I just have everything layered up together and I'm putting them in order into each swag from smallest to largest. So we just have beads and beads and more beads everywhere, but I'm happy that I did this one off of camera because now I can pretty much just do it the right way, the second Second time around you will see a few little mistakes on this one not very noticeable especially considering it's going to be so high up so that's okay but it's been a whole learning process let me just say that much I love it these are the shorter strands now the second ring is going to go in the middle and that's going to contain these longer strands as you can see so I'm thinking this is going to drape about maybe I don't know if it's gonna be two feet, one and a half feet, but it's looking pretty large, you guys, and I'm just so excited for it. Um, it's a lot of work, it is. But what you wanna do is you want to just kind of section everything off. That way it's so much easier to just grab and go. You can just be like small, medium, large, large, extra large, larger, etc. Um, for me, it was a lot easier to just have my notebook and write down the exact sizes of each and how many of each I needed to make. So for these longer strands, we had to make 10 of each. Okay. 10 of each, write that down, which I'm actually going to, you know, list everything down in the description just in case. But, um, here on these shorter strands, I needed to make 11 of each and that's because this ring was just so much bigger on the instruction guide um, actually no 13 of each sorry I think I lied 13 of each so on the, on the instruction guide she said to make 12 of each but this ring was just way too big and it didn't look right so I ended up making um, 13 strands of each size so you pretty much just have to go with what you think looks best for you know your chandelier um if you want less you do less but i i really wanted something that was going to look very very full that's why i have so 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 many beads 
For this next step, we're going to need three quilting hoops. So these are in the size 18 inches. We have one, two, three. As you can see, they look doubled and that's because they are. So each quilting hoop that you buy will come with an adjustment hoop and then a solid hoop. So you're going to need the solid hoop to tie all of the strands onto. So basically you can just kind of loosen this up, pop them right out and then choose which one you want to be. See? part of like the outer edge. So of the three from the larger 23 size, I ended up going with this really nice like wood color. Um, sometimes they come all, you know, cohesive. See how much lighter that one is. But then sometimes they'll come with like a nice cool color. So I'm gonna pop them all out and figure out which ones I want to use in what order. And um, yeah, so like I said, these are the 18 inches. And then that's just gonna go right in the center of the 23 inch hoop. So as you can see, for reference, that's what you know it's gonna look like. Um, these longer strands are gonna hold onto the smaller hoop, and then the short strands are here tied onto um, the larger hoop. I've popped out all three of the hoops, and as you can see, they're all cohesive. None of them really match the one that I really liked from the larger picks. So that's okay, it's gonna go in the middle anyways. You're not gonna be able to really see it. You can always stain it if you really wanted to. So because these strings are really heavy, I wanna pick the strongest, like biggest hoop. So they're supposed to be all the same, but sometimes you'll just get one that's a little bit thicker and that's the one you're gonna to wanna to use because that's a lot of weight to be putting on a hoop and you don't want your hoop to break while you're in the making of putting it all together. If that makes sense. So yeah, these are a little bit thinner. I'm going to use this one to strand up all of my beads. Let's just go ahead and gather up all of the swags. So we're gonna start with the smallest one, which I don't know why I put it right here, but that is the smallest one. Then we go to the next level. Pick one of those up. You wanna get to the next level, pick one of those up. And you just pretty much get each size. Um, and then grab one of the bigger ones. Okay, so right now I have the smallest strand of beads. I've untied it. And the reason that we wanted to leave an extra 10 inches of string on each end was so that we can have enough room to like wrap it and double knot it on the actual hoop. So basically you're just going to like string it, hold it with your thumb, make sure the bead is not up here. The reason you wanna make sure your beads are not up here is because you're going to have another hoop over this one and you're going to have a hoop behind this one as well. This is the middle hoop. And the thing is you don't want to end up tying them all up and then not be able to um, adjust the hoops. So just make sure that they are sagging a little bit just below. So I kind of just hold it with my thumb, I grab the string, I wrap it, and then I make a little like knot. So it's kind of hard to do on camera, but that's what you do. You just make your little knot, da da da, you know how to make a knot, right? Not hard at all, like that. And so this part hangs down low. We have the knot on top, which is perfect because that's going to allow the other hoops to really be able to like perfectly sandwich it. So there's that. This excess string will be cut off, so don't even worry about that. But that's the way you want to tie it up. So we're just going to go ahead and continue swagging these. The thing about the hoop is that you could still slide the strings. So later on when everything's on, you will have to make adjustments. So that's the good part. Like you could still like slide this side to side, etc. So right now we're just worrying about placing them where they need to go. This is the smallest strand. Now let's put the other ones on. So I just have this last one to tie up, but as you can see, just as you would a necklace, you pretty much just layer everything in order of size. So that is one swag. And then now the second swag will go in between here and swag this way. So that's what I meant by crisscrossing. Finally tied up the second swag and I'm just turning the camera on to show you the crisscross motion that it's supposed to look like. Don't worry about all those strands. Like I said, I'm gonna chop those off later, but 
as an idea, this is the whole crisscross like motion you're going to want to create. Um, these are probably spread apart too far right now, but like I said, you can always just um, go side to side, move the strings around, and that's the good thing about having a hoop that is solid, uh, solid like this, if you can see. Okay, so now moving on to the next one, and that next one we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to string from here to here. Okay, so I finally completed stringing all of the strands. I tied everything together, and I ended up putting a like second adjustment hoop around it um, once I completed stringing everything and the reason for that is because um this hoop was going to give this other one support being that i had so much weight on it and you know who knows probably like 10 pounds i would say of beads um it became a really flimsy and i didn't want that to break so putting this around it in order to pick it up and just look at it really helped with the supports now that everything is strung together tied together i'm gonna go through and just like grab all of the strands and now we're going to cut all of these so before the gluing process we need to cut the strings little gap it's not gonna be noticeable it's okay it's gonna be high up anyways so that's what we're gonna do this one needs to be cut just a little bit and then this one as well so I'm gonna wait till my boyfriend gets home so that he can drill through both of them at the same time um, just to be safe I don't want to like ruin anything and then the outer piece is what's going to stay solid so the outer piece has to be the one that looks perfect because that's what everyone will see. Moving on to the next step and now we're using a cutting tool to cut through the wood because we need to make like a little gap. These hoops are the same exact size so they're not gonna fit unless you cut them. You can just kind of measure it by just putting it in there and seeing how much needs to be cut. So as you can see, about that much of a gap is needed. Back in with the tool. If you worry about getting dust everywhere, you will get dust everywhere, so you can do it outside if you mind. I don't care, I can just sweep it up, but as you can see, they're cut, and now that's gonna fit in there uh, perfectly. I mean, it does have a little gap, but honestly, I don't care, no one's gonna see that. I'm gonna go ahead and take the outer hoop, and now I'm going to glue all around and place this right into this clamp everything together using the clamps and you'll see that process now the glue will hold onto these strings like kind of hit hit boom boom like boom boom push. yeah just like dab all those instead of doing a full spiral okay so now the next step is the, the clamps if you really want that to be nicely tight i don't like the gaps so that's why we do that or when you're using the glue you have to wipe it otherwise it's going to dry yellow and ugly so just make sure you wipe it okay so this is the spray that i ended up going with it's rust-oleum in this like coppery color and i thought it would be perfect because a lot of the accents here in our kitchen are this copper color so I'm just spraying the bars and the chain with this. So we've made some progress. I went ahead and had Len drill some holes into the hoops um, in every corner. So pretty much you just need to form an X with the rods. These metal rods, I bought them from Lowe's for like $3 each and I ended up spray painting them. You guys seen that part? So um, basically I tried putting the um, rod through the hole before the paint dried. So that part right there is a little bit messed up but I do like this bronzy color versus the black. I don't know, I feel like it just matches my house a little bit better. Um, and then we connected this chain which I think was about two bucks a foot or something like that maybe even cheaper i think it was like one something a foot so we ended up getting six feet actually seven feet of this chain from lowe's and i also spray painted that we connected them in between the two 
hoops just like that the reason you want to do that in between is because if this slides back and forth it only has limited space it's not going to be sliding and just making everything flip-flop all over the place so that's what's happening so he just used a drill a regular drill and like i said drilled the holes into like an x formation and that was it <laughs>